Hello, and welcome to Hawk Mountain Sanctuary's Stay at Home Speaker Series. Today's program is Golden Eagles in Your Virtual Classroom, and it's made possible by awesome Montana-based organizations, MPG Ranch, Raptor View Research Institute, and Inspired Classroom. You are in for a treat. We have an all-star cast of speakers today. We are joined by special guest, Joshua Lisbon, Education Director of MPG Ranch. Hello. Rob Dominic, Executive Director of Raptor, Raptor View Research Institute. Hi there. Kathleen Dent, co-owner of Inspired Classroom. Hi, everybody. And Ali Depew, co-owner of Inspired Classroom. Hey, everybody. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. My name is Jamie Dawson. I'm the Director of Education at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. And to all of our audience out there, we're so glad you're joining us today as well. Hawk Mountain is the world's very first refuge for birds of prey. And we continue to work hard to be leaders in raptor conservation, science, and education locally and globally around the world. Hawk Mountain is a private nonprofit and membership is the lifeblood of our organization. To all of our members, thank you so very much for your continued support. If you're joining us today and you're not a member, we hope that you consider becoming one in the future. Hawk Mountain hopes that everyone remains safe and healthy during this time of COVID crisis. And we're so excited to offer our community a variety of free virtual programs. As always, Hawk Mountain greatly appreciates any donations. Just so everyone's aware, today's program is being recorded. The video will then be accessible on Hawk Mountain's YouTube channel as a continued resource. We also have a link on our website that directly connects you to our YouTube channel. At any time throughout today's program, viewers may submit questions through the Q&A feature on the Zoom platform. And we've designated some time at the end of the program to take some questions from the audience. We're absolutely thrilled that Joshua, Rob, Kathleen, and Ali are joining us today all the way from Montana. And we're gonna learn about the amazing work that each of them do with their respective organizations. We're going to learn about a fantastic free virtual educational resource. It's a creative online curriculum that's based on real Golden Eagle research and it's designed for students in elementary school all the way through high school. So we're gonna get started with uh, some questions for Joshua. Okay, so Joshua, can you tell us about MPG Ranch and its mission? Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to uh, quickly share something with you here just to kind of put everything uh, in context for where we are at. So hopefully you're seeing Google Earth and we're zoomed in on MPG here in the lovely Bitterroot Valley. And I'm just gonna pull back and show you Missoula and Lolo and Florence just to give you a sense of where we are located and where a lot of this research is taking place. And keep going back and then you can see, you know, Montana. And if we keep pulling back, come over here and you can see where we are in relationship to Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. Uh, way over there in Pennsylvania. So I wanted to share that with you. And then also, if I can figure out how to do it, share this, which hopefully will work. And uh, so hopefully you are seeing um, a view live of the ranch right now. This is uh, what's happening this very moment, looking up towards Baldy Mountain and so just to tell you a little bit about MPG, our mission is uh, to promote conservation through resource sharing, research, education, and information sharing. And our goals are to describe the ecological roles of species, develop strategies to decrease invasive species, improve land restoration practices, support and train conservationists, and then to inventory the flora and fauna present on the ranch. So we're about 16 and a half thousand acres we are privately owned. Uh, we're located about 30 minutes south of Missoula in Montana in the Bitterroot Valley. Um, and we're set up a lot like a biological research station where we're looking at all of the, the interaction between all of the life taking place on the ranch and trying to describe that and understand how it all works together. Wonderful, thank you. And Joshua, you also have a hawk count site at the ranch, correct? 
That is true. Yeah, we do a lot of research there and uh, we're on a flyway, which I'm sure Rob will tell you a lot more about. But yeah, we've been doing uh, raptor counts and, and eagle research on the ranch for a long time now. Awesome. So what is your role as director of education at MPG? Uh, as the education director, I, I do a lot kind of trying to connect the ranch with the general public and with other organizations uh, in town. I develop educational programming, whether it's internships for young students or uh, which we run in the summertime often or I, I bring the public down to for tours or I try to connect them with the research taking place on the ranch like bringing groups down to participate in the eagle capture and banding or the hawk counts or to go for you know uh, pollinator walks or things like that just trying to connect everybody with what we're doing on the ranch and then as a part of that too I'm fortunate enough to to get to study mountain lions uh, in the winter. Sounds amazing. So Joshua, I know that you've been living and working in Montana for a very long time, but I also happen to know that you grew up in Pennsylvania because we went to school together. That so, is true. <laughs> so when you lived in Pennsylvania, did you ever visit Hawk Mountain Sanctuary in your youth? I did, yeah. I, I was fortunate to have uh, parents that really valued time out of doors and so we, we came up to Hawk Mountain a lot and, and we hiked uh, the stretches of the Appalachian Trail near to Hawk Mountain. And I did that, you know, for the entire time that, that I was living in Pennsylvania. Um, I spent a lot of time up at the Pinnacle or going up to the Sanctuary and hiking the River of Rocks or something like that. So yeah, it's a place that I really, uh, I really value. Uh, I think it's a, a fantastic organization and I'm really excited to be able to connect this way. And Joshua was a, a guest uh, facilitator last fall for our primitive skills workshop at, as well, which we received wonderful feedback as well. So yeah, that was fun. <laughs> um, so Joshua, you mentioned your mountain lion research. Can you tell that us a little bit more about that and how you became involved with Inspired Classroom? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we started with, uh, I'm gonna close a couple things here on my computer because it's freaking out. <laughs> Um, there we go. Coming back to you. All right. So uh, we started with the mountain lion research with Inspired Classroom uh, because it was, you know, it was a project that I was really familiar with and we could kind of work out the kinks um, it, as our first project to get a sense of how to how to build curriculum and, and launch this and connect with teachers and classrooms. And I had wanted to develop uh, curriculum based in the research on the ranch for a long time and it's a project that I've been trying to make happen and trying to make happen and and I really just kind of kept hitting roadblocks and wasn't finding success with that until I connected with uh, the fine folks there at Inspired Classroom and so we came together it was kind of it just like everything fell into place like I met them we had similar goals we we really looked at it the same way we were able to develop something um, quickly and and really get it off the ground and, and connect with a, a wide range of students in classrooms all around the country and so the mountain lion project was the first run at that and then something that i've always wanted to do since i started at mpg was to do exactly that but with the eagle research um i've been working with with rob for a long time since i was before i was working at the ranch uh, i was bringing students to rob and he was always like really, really awesome about providing fantastic educational experiences, really like placed a value on, on connecting everybody with the research taking place. Um, and so it just seemed like this really natural connection and I wanted to do it for a long time. And finally, like we, we figured out how and we were able to, and I brought that to Rob and said, hey, I'd love to be able to develop curriculum around this. And, uh, and he was game to do it. And, and so the Eagle Project was the second piece of curriculum that we launched. Wonderful. And these curriculums sound like amazing resources for everyone. Um, and before we go further, can you just mention a little bit about your plans to come to Hawk Mountain this fall as one of our featured guest speakers for our fall lecture series? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm really excited to come out in October to Hawk Mountain and to talk about mountain lions, uh, which is a subject near and dear to my heart. I've had the opportunity to study cats now for eight years, and we're studying a really small population. And so we, we have this intimate window into the lives of these mountain lions. And the one behind me here wearing this beautiful hat is, uh, is F9, also known as Sula. And so we've been able to tell her story. I've known her since she was a, 
a little kitten. So I'm really excited to come out and talk about cats and what we've been seeing. Uh, and we're working on a documentary that either will be well in progress at that point, or we may have it done. So I'll be able to show at least some of that and talk about the research. Thanks, Joshua. And yeah. Joshua's uh, fall lecture is going to be on Saturday, October 10th at Hawk Mountain. And so um, before we transition to speak with Rob, Joshua, did you have any final comments that you wanted to share regarding um, your connection with Rob and Raptor View Research Institute? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think I started working for, uh, for an organization in town providing uh, educational opportunities and summer camps for uh, kind of disadvantaged students. And I did that for years and uh, connected with Rob early on in that process and was bringing these, these camp groups and students out to Rob and he would, you know, introduce us to Osprey at the time because they were easier to work with and, and we could provide this group opportunity. And it, it just lit kids up like they, they absolutely loved that. And that was how I first connected with Rob and with Raft Review. And then I started bringing students down to MPG from the outside. Uh, and then when I transitioned over to working at the ranch, I, I, you know, connected again with Rob and Adam and was bringing groups to them uh, around the fall and spring migrations, but also then around the Eagle research. And so we've been working together for a really long time. And, uh, and we both, I think, place a really high value on on education and connecting people to the research. So it's an exciting, it's an exciting connection to have Inspired Classroom and Raptor Bee Research Institute and MPG all working together. Wonderful, thank you so much for sharing. Um, so we're gonna now talk with Rob. So Rob, um, you're an amazing guy and I have to share that um, last week he was, or earlier this week, he was busy helping to rescue a, a bald eagle that had been injured and he was helping to take it to a wildlife Rehabilitation Center. So kudos to you, Rob. Oh, thanks. So how did you become involved with Raptor View Research Institute and become the executive director? Well, um, my love for raptors, I'm originally from New Jersey. So I got introduced to raptor migration um, on the Kittatinny Ridge, uh, north of uh, Hawk Mountain. Uh, at a place called Raccoon Ridge. And so I always loved nature, wildlife, um, from insects on up to, you know, eagles, right? And bears and lions and everything. So um, I used to do some hawk watching as a young man in New Jersey. And when I moved out to Montana, I wanted to know where I can go hawk watching. And I was actually sitting along the river in, the, in October, um, near some little interface area in Missoula, and I saw a migration event taking place. And so that's when I start to look around, like, where can I go watch hawks? And I soon found out nobody was doing that. And I used to love to do that in New Jersey. That was my escape from everything, was to go up on a ridge top and, and watch the migrating raptors. So fast forward, I ended up finding a couple of locations after looking at maybe 20 uh, over the course of a decade to including the Bitterroot Valley where we have the MPG count now. And so that was it. I wanted to, I wanted to hawk count and I could, and there was nobody doing it. And so, um, I got started with that. And from that in 2004, we, uh, developed Raptor View Research Institute. I graduated from the university with a wildlife degree and I wanted to continue. I wanted to take this passion for, raptor migration and just for raptors in general and wildlife and nature and be able to pursue it and in, in a professional way and that's what I ended up doing in, in incorporating raptor view research in 2004 and just building on what started off as um, basically a raptor migration count and a banding station with an emphasis on golden eagles which obviously is what we're here to talk about it's, mostly today. Thank you for sharing that. And it sounds like you really developed an amazing dream career for yourself. So I did, but I will say it was migration. When I got turned on to raptors migrating along the ridge, it changed my life. I saw a Merlin and a sharp shinned hawk. The first migratory raptor on the ridge I ever saw around the decoy owl was a Merlin and it did five circles around that owl and, and flew off and I was blown away. And my buddy had turned me on. He had said, Rob, you got to see this. 
this guy is up on a mountain with an owl on a pole and he's counting raptors, the migratory raptors. I'm like, no kidding. Wow, I'd love to see that. And that was it, it changed my life. And when I hear uh, owl decoy, I, you're, I assume you're talking about North Lookout. Well, I'm talking about kid, um, Raccoon Ridge, but oh, probably okay. the same thing. That's what we use. We, for those who don't know, um, hawk counters often use a plastic great horned owl that's up on a tall pole to help lure in uh, the passing raptors, the distant raptors, much like your backdrop uh, that I'm looking at. And so it's a great way to get the birds in close and get good looks at them, help ID and the, and the kind of pin them in on the ridge. And, and we use, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that was my, it changed my life. And so, and that's what I love about Hawk Mountain and what, what you guys do and how many hundreds of thousands of people you've reached over the years and have just created this huge um, appreciation for raptors and conservation. And yeah, it's, it's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. So I think everyone would like to hear a little bit more about Raptor View Research Institute. Can you describe what your typical workday is like? Well, <laughs> I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with uh, my typical workday. <laughs> okay, well, what I love in the fall, every day, seven days a week, we're up on the mountain, we're, we're or on the, counting birds, um, banding, getting transmitters out. But in the winter, when we're on the ranch, when we're doing our eagle, our winter eagle research, it is uh, every day, seven days a week, the crews, we don't, we're not slave drivers, but everybody loves what they're doing. And they, they, they just want to do this. It's, you can't, we have to force our people to take days off, but you, you, we, we're trying to catch eagles. That's our job to put transmitters on them to be able to learn about their migratory movements, movement ecology as a whole. And so it's a huge effort that we put in to try and capture these eagles. We capture, well, we've banded over, now it's, it's probably over 600, uh, 600 golden eagles. We put transmitters on over 70 individuals. And um, so our typical work day is, in the winter on the ranch and surrounding area. We have to go out and collect roadkill deer, of which there are a lot. And um, fortunately, unfortunate for the deer, but fortunately for eagle researchers. And we'll go out and we'll place those deer strategically, wait for, wait for uh, eagles to come in and then we try and capture them. And if we're lucky, we could do that when Joshua has a group uh, present, which is always awesome. Um, it, it, it's a it's a roll of the dice. You never know, but it's 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 always great when the stars align and we're able to capture eagles while having students at the ranch. Wow, that's amazing! And a little bird told me that my coworker at Hawk Mountain, Brack and Brown, are biologists and naturalists. I heard that he um, has worked with you in the past. Is this true? Oh, Bracken's awesome. Yes, Bracken came out to work with us. I believe it was 2000 and oh gosh, I, it, I want to say 2012 or 13. And he is, uh, he's just an amazing individual on so many levels, uh, as anybody who knows him knows. Um, and actually in our presentation, we have a video of uh, Bracken capturing an eagle and I wish I could show that. I don't know how to do this. This is new to me, by the way. But yeah, Bracken is an amazing guy, great raptor researcher, scientist, and uh, just an amazing individual. Yeah, so he came out to, to volunteer for us and then we kept him as long as we could. We hated to lose Bracken. <laughs> Bracken is pretty awesome, for sure. Oh, he's so great. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Rob, we'd love to hear more about your Golden Eagle research that has now been developed into this curriculum that we're talking about today. What were some of the original questions you were trying to answer with your research? Originally, we just wanted to know, we wanted to identify important migration corridors. To be able to identify these migration corridors, like, of course, you know, not unlike, I should say, you know, the Kittatinny Ridge, which we know is a, a flyway for raptors, but out west, we didn't know it. it it's all, it, it was all green, all new, a blank slate. So we wanted to identify migration corridors uh, because we knew that um, in the case of golden eagles, 
some work that was being done in Canada suggested that uh, eagle numbers were on the decline, these migratory eagle numbers. And, um, and I say migratory because we could separate eagles out into two major populations, migratory and then resident. And basically the dividing point for that, or lower 48, it, and that is like mid-level, lower mid-latitude uh, Canada is a sort of that 55th latitude. Anyway, we wanted to know where these birds are going. Are they, is there any important areas that we need to focus on if we can identify migration corridors? These might be areas for uh, conservation and to prioritize conservation. Uh, other things we wanted to know is we, every year we have eagles moving into our region of Western Montana in the Bitterroot Valley. Are these the same eagles? Do they stay here throughout the winter? Do they come here for a period of time? And what might be affecting those eagles? Um, and when I say affecting them, what conservation challenges might exist that we didn't even know about? And one of the um, one of the things that popped up that we really didn't expect at the level it is is that we found that uh, ninety percent of the eagles that we were capturing had elevated lead levels. So that was something we had no idea about, but we wanted to learn more. And sometimes these projects. Long-term research is what we're, we base, almost all of our projects are based on that, long-term monitoring, much like uh, hawk counts. And so, and it's over that long-term that things kind of emerge. And so with this, that's what we, we, wanted, we wanted to know if these birds, how these birds are utilizing the Bitterroot Valley. It's an area of rapid development. There's people, there's wilderness or, and forest service lands, private lands. Uh, there's a lot going on in how do eagles interact in, in, in the environment there and throughout the West, frankly. And so we've been able to, from our little, as Joshua showed that map earlier, for those of you who saw it, just that little spot in Western Montana on a landscape level, we're covering from Northern Alaska down to Mexico. It's, it's amazing. Uh, so that what we do on the ranch has this huge ripple effect um, in terms of the education like we're doing with Inspired Classrooms and, and Joshua and the MPG Ranch, but also just in the, in the research. We had no idea what we were going to turn up in terms of the, the, the telemetry data and what we were going to discover in, in, in the way of winter habitat use. One of the things we never would have expected is that golden eagles were selecting for forested lands. We think of golden eagles as open country uh, grasslands, steppe, sage steppe species, which they are, but we found in the winter they were selecting for forested lands. That was amazing. And through our work with the ranch, we've been able to um, identify critical migration corridors uh, from basically Montana up into Alaska um, and I published our findings on that. Uh, just, uh, and the list goes on and on. Yeah. And the amount of kids that we've been able to reach over the years and people in general. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. And certainly the work that you do is of the utmost importance uh, for conservation and science. So kudos to you and keep up the good work. So now we're going to have a chat with the ladies from Inspired Classroom, Kathleen and Allie. So what is the inspiration that started Inspired Classroom and how did you each become involved? Which one do you want to have start? Well, how about you? <laughs> how about me? <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah, Inspired Classroom is a small woman-owned business out of Missoula, Montana. So we were kind of at the, the great point of uh, Rob and Joshua, at, you know, coming together all kind of in the same location, which was very fun and helpful. Um, but both Allie and I are educators by training. Um, I was in the system for over 30 years and then retired and um, started to do this. And Allie's an art educator. Um, and we uh, bought the company in, in about five years, almost six years ago now. Um, and our passion is creating authentic learning experiences. Things that uh, connecting classrooms to experts and to the real work of the world that's going on. And so um, we do a lot of this interactive distance learning um, via video conferencing. And we even go on location at the, the ranch. Um, we haul all of our equipment out there and, and broadcast 
broadcast live uh, for into classrooms um, for students to answer questions or ask questions that experts can answer um, that kind of thing and just show the show the students kind of in place what the world's like and what people are doing in the world. Um, so we do a lot of that, but then we also um, create a more in-depth curriculum and that's where we've gone with MPG Ranch with both the Mountain Lions and the Golden Eagles. Um, and really looking at project-based, scenario-driven, inquiry-based learning. Um, so that learning that goes deep and sticks, we hope. <laughs> Wonderful. And yeah, your programs are amazing. I was lucky enough to uh, participate in one, I think it was, was it last year with the, the mountain lion? It was really amazing. Yeah. Um, Allie, did you want to add anything? That's, that's about it. That's <laughs> about it. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I'll, Allie, we'll start with you for the next question. Um, what services uh, does Inspired Classroom provide and how can people access your services? Awesome. Thanks so much, uh, Jamie. So Inspire Your Classroom, like Kathleen says, we are we're really a full service interactive distance learning um, company. And what that means is that we work with organizations to help them um, provide events uh, similar to this type of event. Uh, but like Kathleen said, sometimes we'll go on location with them. Um, we also have some proprietary software that we have developed that is that scenario-driven inquiry-based learning. Um, and we work with amazing organizations like NPG Ranch so that the software is free to schools. And so it, it really connects that rich, deep content with really great thinking processes. And um, you know, we've been so lucky to work with RVRI and MPG Ranch to be able to build this amazing content and house this content. So that's something that goes out um, to, to students and educators as well. Um, in addition, we do all sorts of crazy things. We tend to be translators um, and we translate from a lot of times there's really big deep thinking happening, um, especially in those scientific communities um, and professional communities. And so we take that really amazing content and we translate it into a way that is understood by, by anyone really, uh, not just students. And so we do that through videography as well and, um, and, and help facilitate um, with facilitation. So those are some of the things. And if you want to access any of them, uh, inspiredclassroom.com is where you go. And we have everything right there for you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And it seems that you really help organizations such as MPG or RAP Review um, really expand their, their reach with their um, educational message. So it seems like a really wonderful service you provide. So Speaking of the Golden Eagle curriculum, it seems like the stars aligned with the key stakeholders with Joshua at MPG, Rob and Inspired Classroom all kind of came together to create this awesome resource that's free. Um, can you share a little bit more behind the story of, of this development of this curriculum? Absolutely. Kathleen, you wanna, do you want to start with that one? No. Sure. Um, so, uh, as Joshua said in his presentation, we, we uh, had worked with him on the mountain lion um, uh, information, and um, so we, it was an easy translate, transition into the Golden Eagle, and uh, we decided um, we wanted to provide something for elementary, something for intermediate, and something for high school students, and our proprietary software is called the IC Challenge. And it's set up with first a scenario um, based on, you know, a real world kind of situation, um, usually involving the age level of kid that, that is there. So for example, our elementary challenge with Golden Eagles um, sets up, uh, uh, tells the story of a couple kids who get interested, who talk to Rob and Adam at RVRI and find out about these uh, migration pathways. And so then the students go in and research that. Um, and their goal is to write a travel log of their chosen eagle. So they can, uh, so for an elementary student, it's more of a literacy activity. Um, and that, that's helpful for um, teachers 
they, they can wrap their heads around that. The kids can wrap their heads around that, but they have to use the research that Rob and Adam are doing on the ranch to write these stories. Um, middle schoolers, we, uh, they have a scenario where they have to create a game that builds awareness about the um, hazards and issues along the flyway. And so um, uh, they use the research and so forth and then create this game. And we had one teacher um, who uh, the students had developed games, even like PE type of games, and they had an assembly and taught the whole school these games. And the outcome of the game was so that the students would learn that the hazards that golden eagles are, are facing as they migrate. So that was pretty fun. And then high school, um, the challenge is set up for to take all that data, to do a lot of data inference, um, really dig into those field notes that, that Rob uh, writes up. And come up with a graphic abstract. So we try to mimic what the, the real world people are doing, um, which uh, scientists, when they present a paper, um, now typically have to have a graphic abstract with it. And so we uh, try to mimic that so kids will get to understand how to put those types of communication pieces together. And the, the goal of that was to create awareness around Golden Eagle stewardship. So those were the projects that the students have had to come up with in each of these things. Um, so uh, again, we try to mimic some of the types of things that would be going on with the researchers, but really put it in context where the kids can feel like they're part of it. And then when they submit projects, um, Rob gets to take a look at them and give them feedback, which is pretty exciting. So it's not just the teacher giving feedback, which is lovely, but um, it's actually the, the people on the ground um, that are doing it that get to give a little bit of narrative feedback to the students, which is super fun. The kids can work in teams. Um, it's collaborative. Right now, all of those challenges are free. They're on our website at inspiredclassroom.com. And we've also made them available. So whether you're a teacher or a parent, because we know there's lots of parents out there going, what do we do with these kids? So <laughs> we're making those available. And then the other thing that, that we had the fortune of doing, and I'm gonna let Allie talk more about this, is work with Google um, and Google uh, Earth and have used their new tool that we were trusted testers for them. And so Allie, explain that part. Yeah, in fact, I think I might just show if yeah. that's all right with everybody. I'm gonna share my screen and here we go. So what you're taking a look at is uh, Google Earth's content creation um, tool. And it's a new tool that was launched well, I guess in the uh, late late summer, I believe, is when they officially officially launched it, maybe um, early fall this year. And if any of you have ever um, seen any of the Google Earth Voyager projects, the, it's, if you haven't, it's really something amazing to check out. Um, so Content Creator is now a tool where you can create your own um, like sort of like a Voyager project, a, a version of that. And some of them get highlighted and ours was one that was chosen to be highlighted by Google Earth, which was pretty exciting um, going through that testing process, working, on, working with them on the tool. This project is also embedded in the challenge. So students that are working on the challenge also um, get to learn about golden eagles by using Google Earth. And so um, I'm just going to, I'm going to ask Rob a question and then I'm going to come back to telling a little bit about it. But Rob, as a researcher, do you use programs like Google Earth? Oh, Google Earth is critical to our research, especially when you want to check in on the birds on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and it just makes it so interactive. It's incredible. Uh, without Google Earth, I don't even know how we would be able to track these birds the way we do uh, regularly. I spent my whole, I spent most of the day before we got on this, on this uh, Zoom meeting, just looking at our birds, sharing fixed data, our fixed data, which is location data with, with folks and updating collaborators and partners. And uh, yeah, we're tracking birds, everything from a little crow-sized Cooper's hawk on up to the golden eagle. And without Google, I, 
this it's such an amazing amazing interface i i uh yeah yeah i wouldn't know what to do without it it's just, it's just incredible really well and that's and that's that's huge because what we're doing is we're giving the students and we're teaching students the tools that they need that are being that are being used in the real world to actively um, pursue science and so um, part of part of using this tool is also the mapping and understanding how to use Google Earth and just becoming familiar with it. So just a, a quick, it's a, a really easy um, setup and dashboard. You always have the map interface so you can see where you're at. You have a little bit of text on the right hand side and media up in the top. And as you click through, this will take you and take you and your students through um, learning about where the eagles are. We have um, interviews with Joshua and Rob and Adam, talk about habitat, talk about some of the issues they face. Um, and then let's see, this will, this is kind of fun because it really gets you in. And then of course you can zoom in, you can use this component just like you would be using Google Earth without the additional, additional components. So you can take a look at where MPG Ranch is, um, what we're looking at with those lines are actually the eagle migration tracks. So this is a really fun, fun tool uh, for students. And let's see if I come over here. This is our website. I'm just going to show you really quickly how to get to it. So if you come down to the educators page, you'll see down here Golden Eagle Earth, or Golden Golden Eagle Google Earth projects. Um, you can click on this link, and that will take you to so um, here's the Google link, so you can go to the Google page, Google Earth page right there. Um, but down below a little bit, we have a lot of auxiliary lessons um, that you can use with your students um, or your kiddos, and we have organized them from a knowledge understanding component up to a synthesis and evaluation piece um, with also basic level, intermediate level, and advanced level. So there's a little something for everybody color coded and organized on the site. Um, so that's the that's the Google part the, the Google Earth project. And like I said, this piece is embedded into the challenge. So hey Allie, um, while you're on our page, why don't you take them to the where they can find the information for the challenges? Oh you bet absolutely. So good thinking. So that's oh, why there's two of us. Access amazing free content now. So here I am on that educator page. There's actually several, even our homepage. I believe you can access the. Um, the right there. Here. Yeah. So this will take you. And then these are it's a little bit of information about registering. These are the active challenges that we have right now. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of go through, in fact, I get to add another one after this call is over that we're just getting ready to launch with another organization. So we've got all of these different challenges. They're available to you. Um, read a little bit about them. Choose one that looks interesting to you. Then you go to ICChallenge.org where up here in the right hand corner, you can, um, well, this is my account already. We're already there, but you'll see create an account. You'll click that create an account um, and then you'll get started and you'll have um, access to <laughs> we got some things. So yeah. So Kathleen, anything else that you would like to? Um... I don't know. Let's ask Jamie. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. That was fascinating. Um, so if people, um, educators or parents, are using your your challenges, your curriculum, if they have any questions, um, should they just email you? How does how does that happen? Absolutely, that's a great question, Jamie. So with all of our challenges, we have a project manager. And um, one of the things that Inspire Classroom is built on is support of educators. We know that, and, and when I say educators, I'm including parents in that, in that pile as well right now. Um, it's important to have the support when you're doing, when you're teaching and learning at a really deep level. We like to say that we're building cognitive sweat and we're really making those kids work. They should be working harder than we are, right? Um, so, 
So we do, we have a project manager. If there's any questions about, about that, um, you can email our project manager. Uh, he'll reach out to you as soon as you register. Um, there's also ways to get in touch with us through our, our website um, if you have other, other questions or thoughts. So. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, another question, do you wanna just touch on kind of the variety of different organizations you work with? Oh gosh, certainly. Kathleen, do you wanna take this one? Sure, um, yeah, uh, we do um, a lot with uh, organizations like uh, the Missoula Art Museum. Um, we have worked with the United States Institute of Peace, which is out of Washington, DC, on a challenge around peace building for high school students, finding out about things that are going out on in the world um, that are building peace and then working on a project to counteract the negative news that's going on, which is kind of a good project to have right now, I think. Um, we work with Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks. Um, we work with uh, Clark Fork Coalition. A lot of environmental type of topics because, um, you know, with STEM, uh, the push for STEM education and that kind of thing, a lot of teachers are looking for things to get their kids into project-based learning, but it's expensive to, you know, have field trips and, and take kids out in the field. It, sometimes it isn't always possible. And so uh, we find that working with these types of organizations really um, helps expand their reach. The other thing that we're pretty passionate about is equity of access. Um, and Montana um, and a lot of other places have um, uh, schools that are in rural or more isolated areas. We even worked with, talking uh, about New Jersey, we worked <laughs> with Hoboken, New Jersey, which in its own way was isolated. Um, and so building things that students can access and um, now with the COVID issues, um, people are finding out how to access remote learning a little, little bit more. Um, so having this really good stuff that, that kids can access, even if they aren't really close to MPG Ranch or you know, wherever it is, um, is super important. Every kid deserves the opportunity, so. Wonderful, thank you so much. And of yep. course, uh, this virtual education is, is more important and needed now more than ever but it's always important. So we're so glad you're doing this important work. So I think we'll end with one question for Rob because everyone's fascinated with golden eagles, right? So what is your favorite part about working with golden eagles? And if you have any updates from the spring migration that you feel like sharing? Well, the spring migration, I would, I would direct people to Peter Sherrington's um, Rocky Mountain Golden Eagle Research Foundation um, blog, because that is the number one uh, place where we go for information on, on Golden Eagle spring migration counts. And he's been doing that count since the 80s. Uh, Mount Lorette, I believe it is, um, but there's a couple others now. That's just a, an amazing resource for those interested in spring migration in terms of the counts. Um, my what's my favorite thing about working with golden eagles well it, it goes on and on it does um but what i really have to admit i love catching golden eagles uh i loved doing the um when, when you get one of these incredible creatures in your hand and you're able to work with it and do what we do it's we we, we reference we kind of jokingly call it an alien abduction and and the eagles are in and out of our hand, usually in 30, 45 minutes. But I just, everyone, I don't care if, if I handle 100 in a year, or in the case of last fall, 100 and, um, well, about, about 117 in six weeks. Everyone is beautiful, just incredible to be able to work with these amazing creatures and to be able to track them via satellite telemetry. This was something that, the pioneers of raptor research knew someday would happen, but probably not in their lifetimes. I remember hearing from the Craigheads, um, John and Frank Craighead, they knew someday these were pioneers in raptor researches and uh, they, 
the day when we'd be able, they saw where technology was going and, and when you could put an instrument, a lightweight instrument on a golden eagle's back and then you track their daily movements in some cases for five, six years, it, it gives us a very intimate look into the lives of these um, secretive, uh, elusive, um, majestic creatures. And I love that. And, and I'm gonna go on a little bit and I love the sharing. I love sharing the information with the kids. I, this inspired classroom collaboration with the MPG Ranch is, it has more impact than I can even imagine. I never imagined in my life uh, that we would be here uh, doing something like this. And I just, it, it's just, it's incredible. I'm very grateful for that, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. And I think we're, we're trying to convince Rob to do another virtual talk um, with more detail about the specific Golden Eagle research maybe later in the summer. Oh yeah, do it. I'll, I, I, we have a lot of material and I, uh, material and I promise it won't be too painful. Uh, these, <laughs> these tracks and the things that we're uncovering are just mind blowing, um, really are. Wonderful. Well, we're looking forward to that. Thank you. And so I'm going to squeeze in one more question from the audience. It's for Joshua. Joshua, what do the initials MPG stand for? Uh, MPG stands for Max and Paige Gurness. So Max and Paige are the owner's kids. Uh, Paul Gurness is the owner. And so the organization is named for his children. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So that's going to wrap it up for today. So much gratitude to our wonderful guest speakers, Joshua, Kathleen, Ali, Rob. Thank you so much for joining us today. For our awesome audience, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate you um, taking the time to be with us. And we have a lot of other upcoming virtual programs. So stay tuned. We have this Sunday, May 3rd at 2 o'clock, Rachel Carson, Inspiration, Legacy, and Challenge. Then next Wednesday, May 6th at one o'clock, we have Migration Madness with our very own Ridgetop Rachel. And then on Saturday, May 9th at one o'clock, we have Digging for Answers, Uncovering Mysteries of the Florida Burrowing Owl. On Wednesday, May 13th at one o'clock, we have Citizen Science and You. And Friday, May 15th at four, we have Raptor ID for Beginners. So again, thank you to everyone for joining us today. And we hope to see you again soon. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Hey, and if there's any further questions, um, just shoot them our way. Thanks for adding that. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.